So what's going on today, teacher? Well, I just got back from painting in the park. And since I've got all my supplies with me, I thought I would explain to you what I take because I've had a lot of questions lately about what you need for outdoor painting or out of the house painting or plein air painting. So I'm very low tech, so I thought I would show you what I take. So since uh, the pandemic, we've been going to the park once a week. This is key to what I take with me, the cigar box that I customized with dividers. This is all I need to paint in the park. So I've got everything here. I've got a book of paper here. I've got a water bottle. I have a fold up water cup made by Faber Castell. And my paints in a metal container palette. It's called the travel palette if you want to go buy one on one online. And the reason I like these over the plastic versions is if you drop them, they're solid and it's nice to mix on the metal. Then I usually keep an old towel so I can absorb water. And I take either traveling artist tissue or artist genuine tissue. So that's what all I take. And then I have a basket and I usually throw in just an extra eraser because I'm very nervous without my eraser. So, and then I take, I do have an umbrella that I take for days when it's sunny and a little fold up chair. So this works very well for local painting. All I do when I get somewhere is unfold my chair. I keep this box in my lap, the cigar box. I usually lean my paints up on the box sometimes. Sometimes I'll put this in the little hole um, and I'll fill my water, uh, fill it with my water. Um, and I usually use one page in my book. I make these books with um, arches, watercolor paper, or saunders, and I sew the pages into the spine and I found that it's just so easy to grab and go with this. So I have just different pictures that I've done journal style or in cafes or in the park. And I only paint on one side because once in a while I sell something and I don't want to sell two paintings for the price of one if there's one on the back. So that said, I'll tell you what is in the box. And you don't need as many things as I have. Number one, you can take you can take buy specific brushes for outdoor painting. They're called travel brushes, and the handle is shorter. So I like to have a flat one that has a, a tip that can make lines, an edge that can make lines. I actually have two sizes. You really don't need to, but this is a nice one to have too. Then I have these really cool travel brushes that you can buy online um, that look like this when they're folded up so they don't take a lot of room. And then when you unfold them, they are almost a regular size brush. So I like this one very much. It's made by Roseberry and Company. And I have a couple other ones. Then I discovered I can also throw in one or two of my regular size brushes um, when I have like a special idea or I want a bigger brush or like this one will hold a lot, a lot of water. And um, then I also take, I really like to have with me a liner or a rigger brush. And I usually have one pen in brown that's waterproof and I have one pencil or two. Sometimes it's better to have more pencils than you think you need. Uh, this is really cool, this little thing that rides on top of my pencil. It's actually a sharpener and it takes up very little room. Faber-Castell, I think you can buy them online. 
And I have this one other item I'd recommend. Well, actually, a couple things. I have a baby uh, medicine dropper that's good if you want to. Uh, let's see. What, what I do is I either spray my paints with water or I drop a drop of water on them. So you can to get so that you can lift off your paint easier when you get to your destination so you don't have to scrub your brush on the paint. So you could do that with your dropper. If you don't have a dropper, you can also buy a little spray bottle. I prefer a slightly bigger one because you can do it faster and easier and, and you can also use that to clean off your palette when you're done. So. Let's see. I've got to have my eraser. It has to be a white one. It can't be too dirty or leave smudges. I've got a Mr. Clean eraser because I make a lot of mistakes and these are good to wipe off mistakes. I usually have a candle, wax candle, or a piece of white crayon um, in case I want to um, use that as a resist in my painting. And then I have some clips, usually little teeny binder clips that just hold open my pages. So like if I wanted to paint, I might clip it open, uh, especially if it's windy or for different reasons, I have them. So that's basically the basics. But I wanted to talk about how you could even, the, the other options you have, because this is what I do on a general daily basis locally but I wanted to explain also if you're going on a trip and your space is limited, how you could even do it smaller and tell you about what works and what doesn't work because I've tried a lot of stuff. So if you're going on an airplane or you're going somewhere with a small space, you can buy something like this. This is a really cool little paint box. It has 12 pans of paint in it. And it's the perfect size for painting on uh, the table in a restaurant or painting on an airplane table. And you've still got your regular size half pans and you've got a nice metal surface. Used to have a little, really cool little metal cup here that fit on, but sadly I lost it. Um, you can also get something like this online, which is a slightly bigger paint box. Um, it generally, I wanted to explain to you how you could hack it. It generally comes with something like this that's sitting inside of it that holds your pans. But you can pull this out and then you can put in a variety of sizes of little watercolor pans. These are whole pans, these are half pans, and then get in as many colors as possible. And this is, again, a really nice size for painting in smaller places. Um, show you what else I've tried. I saw this online and it was a little pencil box and I had magnets on it and I put it on my painting little board I took with me and it was okay. It wasn't my favorite-ish thing I've ever painted with but you could do something like this if you need a little narrow thing and this one you could prob probably find an old pencil box so it's low budget. This one I bought uh, from an art supply company in Europe and I really wanted to try it. I was very, very curious about it and I kind of think, don't tell them, I think it's kind of a dud. I don't use it very much. It didn't hold that many colors. For me, it was awkward to use. It was, um, I'll show you, it does, I mean, it seems like it should work. Finally, I took out the pan, the piece in here that was holding the pan so I fit in more pans. But I'm just, it should, it does have a lot of mixing room and it might work for you. It's called a cloverleaf palette. It's made of plastic. But I have to tell you, it wasn't my favorite thing. So I don't use that very much. Um, sometimes I'll make my own palettes out of Altoid boxes. I'll make it for students or for to give away. You can do it. You can find lots of um, instructions online about how to use Sculpey clay and make your own little um, your own little palette wells in there. Um, I made them up and I made all kinds of little charts so that to give my students so they could have a little referral chart that they could use 
to see what colors to mix and it would fit right near their palette and what colors to squeeze in. So that would be nice for reference. And then you can get really, really inventive and you can make teeny tiny paint boxes. So it becomes like a hunt for the smallest paint box, uh, smallest little paint box. And occasionally I did take this to France and use it once. I have to admit, it's, it's not that good. There's not enough room for mixing colors if I wanted to use it the entire trip, but it was fun to, and when I didn't have a lot of room to take things out. Um, uh, so that said, those are the paint boxes. Um, then I thought I'd talk about other brushes because I'm often asked about water brushes. Water brushes are a great invention. Um, the water is in, you basically fill it with water and then when you need it, uh, you need the water, you just squeeze it and it comes out and so you can use it and dip it into your paint and paint away and then you just rinse it off if you have a cup of water or you can wipe it on a little napkin and squeeze it. So they're a good idea when you have, when you have no access to water. For me, and there's lots of different manufacturers that make them, this is a, a fancier one, and they have all different kinds of tip sizes. But for me, I like them only when I don't have access to water because um, I don't control the water very well with these. Um, too much comes out when I don't want it, so I'm much happier with a regular brush. And there's all different kinds of travel brushes. I used to use, uh, and I still do sometimes, Cheap Joe's makes, American Journey makes a really nice set of travel brushes. They have them in different sizes. So I have some of those. They make a rigger travel brush, which is, which is nice, which I think maybe I lost. Um, and then there's lots of other brands that make travel brushes. So that's the brushes. And let's just talk about one more thing, because I know you're busy, you want to go out and paint or go on vacation. Let's talk about your book, your painting book, because you could make something like this, or it's much easier to go buy something. So you can go buy a Moleskine watercolor book. Um, I have several of these. Um, I used, I used to, they're really wonderful because you can put them in your pocket and carry them anywhere, and the quality of the paper is really nice. And it doesn't take that long to finish a painting on a little page like that. Stillman and Bird makes one too. Uh, that's nice too. Um, you can also, let me show you, you can buy the next size up, those Moleskine um, painting books come in other sizes. So I would recommend maybe getting this size, which is just a little bit bigger. And, um, it's maybe eight by six or five, and it's very nice for painting, and you get a little more room. Uh, there's another brand, Global Art, that makes them. That um, is pretty good. I like it. This is the brand I started with. I like the paper. Uh, the only um, problem was I found they weren't quite as durable for me, maybe because I was rough on them. Then I just want to tell you one other thing. Oh, and different sizes of the books. So if you want to make your own book, you can, I usually find a six by nine is a good size to uh, have. It's a little bit bigger than the one I've been using daily, but, uh, or you can go even bigger. I mean, it's really totally up to you what fits in your luggage, what fits in your um, purse, your backpack. Um, this was a nice size, especially for a trip because you could, you know, you had a lot of room to stretch out and paint. So um, this is a good size. And then I always, when I do make them, I always put envelopes in so I can put all kinds of little things I pick up along the way or reference material so that if I don't have some, ooh, look, I did silverware. Um, and if I don't have something to paint, I'll bring, a, I'll usually have some pictures stuffed in there I can paint if I take it to the doctor's office or something. But the last thing I want to show you. So when I go to the park, I just used to take this shopping thing, the, the shopping basket that I bought. It works really well and it's lightweight and I don't care if it gets too dirty. That worked all summer. But I find for Europe if I, or even on a trip, I take these bags 
I think they come from India. You probably can find them in a variety of places. And they have zippers. And it's like it's called a crossbody boho uh, bag. And, um, and it has a little zipper thing for your keys or your money. And then the whole thing zippers. But you can stuff so much into it. So when you go out for the day, um, you could even take like a smaller cigar box. Or you could take... Sometimes I buy these bags, you can make these uh, uh, that have a few extras in them, or you can, and I just take the bag with my book and stuff it in my purse with my artist tissue and maybe my fold-up cup, um, or I can take the box if I really want to, it will fit in this bag, but I find this way, I have it with me, I can stuff as much as possible, I can even stuff my sweater in there. And if it gets dirty, I just throw it in my laundry. I don't really care about it. And it's got a zipper so nobody can reach in and grab it. So, that said, this is what I recommend for painting anywhere. You don't have to, you just have to uh, be a little inventive and get your stuff, but you don't have a lot, of, don't need a lot of stuff and you don't need to spend a lot of money. If you would like, I can, you can email me and I'll tell you the colors that I prefer. I usually just take 12 colors, but you can you can travel with as many as three colors, four colors. Um, so I think that's it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I love answering your your uh, questions and seeing your comments. So um, hope to see you again in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.